You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Bar Rescue After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Bar Rescue After Show. If you get in trouble, bring it home to me. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Bing is for doing. We're here doing Bar Rescue. Season 3, Episode 14. There's no crying in baseball. Wait a minute. There's no crying in the bar business. In the bar business. According to Taffer. And I tend to believe him when he says that. Oh, absolutely. And furthermore, you know, how relatable that we're in a sports bar, right? Yeah. So, uh, I am your host, Phil Svitek. Join alongside Kevin Ungaro. And no, we do not have Dorinda. Barker or Chris Lee Kennedy tonight. They unfortunately couldn't make it, but they will. They will be back. They've been part of the pirate ship. They've uh, they've got some big things in the works. And um, it's just unfortunate, Phil, because we collectively between us have two years of bar experience. My two years of bar experience, and none of yours. How about how about like most owners though? I feel like we have a lot of experience wanting a bar and drinking at a bar. We do have that. <laughs> so. We do have that, and we appreciate the fantasy of opening the, of opening the bar. And after seeing Bar Rescue. We understand it's much better to spend the, you know, anywhere from twenty thousand to a hundred thousand on your basement, and making yourself your little playroom. That's right. Right. Uh, absolutely. Um, so we're in Tucker, Georgia, po- a population of twenty-seven thousand, um, and it's about twelve m- miles outside of Atlanta. So it's it's at a pretty good location. Um, you know, they said it's a. I, I mean, this is a big highway. They said five-lane highway. I don't think even L.A. doesn't really have five lane highways. So that's, a, that's a lot of traffic. That's a lot of people. Well, it's Hotlanta. It's near Hotlanta. And the median age is young. Yeah. As we learn. So we do see potential here. We do. Um, but right off the – by the way, so, um, you know, as John and his experts, Russell and Tiffany, come in, they're talking about the sign and things like that. And, you know, that's obviously always a big thing of marketing is how does it look from the outside. But later on tonight, in tonight's episode, we're going to do um, another test that John did where he called the bar, to, you know, and he called that the first point of marketing. Anytime someone calls in the bar and, you know, what kind of experience they have with that. So we're going to give um, the comeback, as it's called now, a try and to see how uh, how well they respond to us. Um, but uh, let's start with initial reactions. And uh, by the way, Marissa, who is in the booth, Feel free to chime in tonight to, to speak on behalf of the ladies. I know you watched it uh, yesterday as well, as we always do. Um, so don't be shy. But what was, what was your guys' first uh, impressions? I thought we were going down that road of a bartender that wanted to just be social. I and thought, yeah. Initially. Yeah. That it was the falling in line of the, hey, let's, why don't you just do it in your basement if that's what you want. And... Um, I was immediately skeptical when I heard uh, a bar regular wanted to buy in because typically, and I don't want to bite the hand that feeds, you know, John or anyone else, but typically the bar regulars, I, I don't know. Yeah, they're not. Um, well, they, they're always the most upstanding citizens. I mean, they're not that they're immoral, but do they have the work ethic? Do they have, I feel like if they did, they wouldn't be in a bar. Well, he certainly was an executive chef and things like that. By the way, I, I have to commend them. Their uh, whatever they call it, the the, the tease, right? The opening of like uh, you know fraud and theft and just um, shenanigans. Um, I was like, this is going to be amazing. Yeah, no, and my friend that tried to get uh, the workman's comp. Yeah. Did you see the lame fall with the smashing of the yeah. dish? And a little, but um, of, course, of course they didn't fire him. He quit. Yeah. That that in itself was was the amazing part. Um, so I, I was really gearing up for an amazing episode just off of that, and, and the fact that there are we've seen two owners in the past, but never in, in to this extent. Um, oh, meaning yeah, I, I, that was the one thing too. Was I, I figured for sure there's no way they're going to be able to work this out. I thought so too, but but um, but I guess eventually they did. Marissa, what were your th- what were your overall thoughts of tonight's episode? 
I, I, you know, I generally liked it, um, because we saw, we, we didn't really see, uh, that the crew members, they made a lot of mistakes, but we didn't see a lot of fighting against each other, or, like, uh, accusing of each other, being like, oh, well, you did this, and you didn't help me in there, and stuff like that. So I, I liked the overall, uh, crew members, how they all just had a nice relationship with each other. If you like the party aspect, Marissa, if, <laughs> even though you're not even a partier. No, no, I'm not a partier. I know you know, but, but you like. I like the relationship stuff. between everyone. I would. I here's how I would describe the bar. It was a, uh, you know, it was a well kept place for friends to get together. That's all it really was. Yeah. You know, because it wasn't. It wasn't really dirty. I mean, apart from maybe the kitchen with the fan that going on, but for overall, in terms of how bad we've seen it, it's not that dirty. I would say. Are you kidding me? There was no, mold, was there was bad, oh, sludge okay. everywhere. Yeah, it wasn't, they it, didn't focus on it as It much wasn't as ever. bad as what we've seen, but it was bad. And, and uh, you know, this is the part that really frustrated me. As soon as I saw that it's a place that allowed smoking, I was just totally turned off. Not to the episode, of course. Yeah, I, thought, I thought the show, the episode was great. But I was totally turned off to the bar. And I think that it's just tough to keep a clean bar when you have that. It yeah. just leads to so many other bad things. I think we've all, we've learned to survive with smokers going outside, having their smoke, coming back in to drink. But the few times that I experience it now, I'm so much more hungover the next day with smoke. You, you, you know, your clothes smell, your hair smells. It's, it's, but I just see, I just remember going, if, if I could go back to Tending Bar, one of the things I would enjoy is the fact that there is no smoking in the Boston bars where I used to attend bar, but it made it brutal, Phil. And, and I just feel it's such a dirty habit. And I don't know. I, I, I just feel like it contributes and it probably doesn't, but I felt like it didn't. As soon as I saw them all smoking, I was like, Oh, gross. Well, and you know, Marissa was actually smart enough to pick this out um, by it having to be sectioned off from, from the rest of everybody else. Um, you know, it basically you cut off the rest of the bar. You, yeah. you cut off. I mean, that small section is, you know, representative twenty five percent of your entire facility. Yeah. It's a pen. Yeah, and so you're not really aware of what's going on out there. Not that anybody's really I out mean, there anyway. But well, do you guys like going to a bar with smoking? No, no, no. Joe probably does. Our friend Joe, but you know what? I'll tell you, Joe. Actually, his dad is running. I think the Elks or one of those things in Florida. And you know, Joe told him cut the smoking out because you have a lot of old people who have actually quit for their health reasons who can't come, and you can't attract the young people. And it was a big beef and a big debate. You know, the father actually made the unpopular tough decision, Taffer style. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it definitely sent a jolt into some people, but, you know, long-term prospects are, are better. They, yeah. they've, they've already gotten members, people coming in. Yeah, it's just, I, I'm actually surprised they still have it. I didn't know, I didn't know it was still legal. I mean, it's, it's, I guess it's the South, I, you know, who knows, it's state to state, whatever it may it's be. It's one of the things I hate about going to Greece. You know, they've, they've really decreased it a lot in the last few years, thankfully, but it just makes it so difficult to really enjoy yourself. You mm -hmm. can't enjoy the food, you can't enjoy the alcohol. I don't know. Um, what, what did you think of the, you know, they made a big point about the sign, you know, how it looked like yeah, bed and breakfast. It did. And all. It, it did. did. It did. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, you know, it, it looked like a pancake house. It looked that way because, uh, you know, so basically you have the whites and, and, and the red, and then you look at the rest of the building, and it's just dark. Yeah. It's like, you know, so it, it literally looked like a bed and breakfast that you would drive by. Oh, I, I can sleep here, you yeah. know, and then wake up and continue on my journey. It didn't, it, you know, there was no excitement. Like, when, when you looked, not, not that it was a nightclub, but, you know, how in the past episodes you see the lights coming from the inside to the outside, and it's like, oh, wow, this place is lively. Yeah, it no. It had nothing. Yeah, nothing. And I, I, I think of the lady running it, Susan... I felt bad because I've seen that before where the owner, and I've seen the female owner, when, you know, the people I worked for, T.T. the Bears in Cambridge. It was this Bonnie and Miles, a former couple that stayed together for business reasons. They weren't uh, romantically involved, but they were involved still in the business. And Miles was in a really bad car accident, and so then it was just down to Bonnie. And it was just really overwhelming and she was a great bar owner bar you know manager brought in such some of the best acts in the 70s and 80s into this bar and at the time because i got close with her and felt bad on my free time i would run i'd renovate the place you know after hours for fun you know just just i'd say if you just get me the paint i'll do it and she did um 
but I've seen it before, and I feel bad for her. I felt bad for Susan because I felt like she was just in the weeds. And then sometimes, well, oftentimes with people is when we get in the weeds, instead of confronting and saying, how do I, you know, trim the weeds? How do I fix this? How do we get out of the weeds? They just go deeper in by sedating it, and that's what she was doing, it seemed like. Well, uh, she she was uh, focused a lot on John. Is this is going to be a bad episode because I'm going to call him John, John. Uh, John, Just say, owner. yeah, J John, uh, executive, I'll call him executive chef, John. I'll talk, uh, okay, so. Pseudo-executive chef, John. Pseudo-executive chef, John. Um, she, she was primarily focused on him and his shortcomings and um, obviously not a very, you know, we've talked about it. Anytime you're in any business, right, you, you, as an owner or as an employee, when you look at the faults of others, rather than seeing, okay, what they're doing good, it's just a rep recipe for disaster. Yeah. Yep. And he was just sitting there staring at her, and at least in editing. But I believe that. I don't believe he was in the kitchen sweating. No. I think it's just more picking on her and the mistakes that are being made. And and when do I get my money back? You know, that kind of thing. You yeah. know. Why, why would he say he's an executive chef? Just because... I don't know. He knows how to man a grill, and, and he gave it some I mean, point I of title. I don't know. How many Cliff Clavins? I'm not saying he's a Cliff Clavin type, but but from Cheers, you know, but how many, like, of those bar regulars are just know-it-alls, you yeah. know, and braggarts, and, you know, and so he probably had some cooking experience. I don't know. Maybe he was good on the grill. I think, I mean, here's the thing. I think, I think any guy, if they have a grill at their house, they can, you know, make a pretty good burger, and then right. that... <laughs> it's so much different. Yeah. You know. And uh, it just takes such a proactive approach to all of this and it's not just you know throwing arrows at other people yeah now, i always say you know it goes back to uh, even sitcom writing but the first lesson they taught you is if you're gonna you know um say something isn't funny or story-wise doesn't work you better have something better in its place and for me he wasn't doing any of that stuff yeah and by the way also it she wasn't allowing it either it seemed like yeah but I feel like he was the Hail Mary. Okay, I'll bring him in. That'll get me some food. It'll get me some more money. But again, just someone who's in the weeds. Yeah, I think their biggest problem, you know, and, and you talk about it all the time, John understands people. And so they didn't understand each other's strengths and weaknesses. Right. You know, they didn't, ultimately, John's pseudo executive chef's, John's right. uh, strength was, you know, the business aspect of things, the accounting, all that. Well, it wasn't to run a kitchen. I believe if he had a strength, it was that. And I felt like if you have a body that isn't destructive, you know, there are people that will give you, say, 25% of the money, but are so destructive with their personalities that literally you can't have them evolved at all. We know that at AfterBuzz, we've had people, right, mm -hmm. that try to get in and we just say, no, no, come and just watch the shows and cheer us on, but no, because we know. Oh, but I'll I'll work cheap. I'll work for free. No. Nope. I think in his case, he he wasn't. He didn't seem like a drunk. He probably liked his beers, but he didn't seem like a drunk. And he did seem uh, intelligent. So there's something. There's an asset, you know, to maybe instead of just okay getting his money, let's let's use that brain to take some pressure off. Yeah. So and again, John's just amazing. <laughs> Um, which, you know, so he comes in and, and he speaks to Susan right away and she's like, she says that line to him, I'm off the clock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not the right way to start no. off because he says you're never off the clock. And I, you know, it's true. You're, when you're never, in, ever off the clock. Especially. Never. You know, especially when you're this much in debt. Bill, never. How many times, you know what, and I see some, you guys get mad at me, but even when we have parties here at After Buzz, right? Or we'll have. Parties at other venues for after buzz. And I get the, ugh, can we just have fun? Yes, you can have fun, but you have to all you have to keep one eye open. Doesn't mean that you can't not have fun and socialize, have a few drinks, but no, mentally you're still on the clock. You need to be. If this is your business, your company, you need to be. Maybe in that one rare occasion when things are going great and maybe you have that first in command who can really handle everything, but still even so, if anything goes wrong that gets beyond that person's scope, who's on the clock? You. Yeah. 100%. It's true. Um, and he, so he separated them, and the, um, it was great editing back and forth of how they were just blaming each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and oftentimes when I've seen that kind of disconnect, it's really hard 
to get them to work together. I, I was saying to myself, I, I know when, uh, when I've had those kind of disconnects, it's so hard to just bite your tongue and pick up and try to, you know, carry the other person. It's hard. Well, he, he did it well. You know, he spoke to them individually, but then right after, he's like, all right, now we're both going to talk. Right. You know, and, and like you, like John, John Taffer said in the past, he just doesn't have time. And so, you know, if there's a situation, you got to deal with it, which is, you know, as you always kind of mention, it's good principle in general. Yeah. You know, just, just knock things right out. Right away, come. step on it. That's my big thing here. I say, you know, it's a little spark, a little fire start and step on it. I say all the time, I say you, Phil, not to Marissa. Marissa, right? That's right. I say step on it. Don't wait a week or two or three. Or, no, get that person, sit them down. This is what you did wrong and why. And please give me your assurance we're not going to have that because it does. It just escalates. But with John, what blows me away, it just continually is the fact that he is such a student of people, that he knows people this well. And these practices, which to me, totally applicable to any other business. Yeah. Not just a bar business. I agree. Um I think with this rescue, the biggest the, the biggest takeaway with this is he got them to work together. To me, that was the the biggest achievement, um, rescue wise. I, I think I think it was that, and uh, you know, the fact that yeah, it's it stems from there, and now they're willing to work together, and so their their minds on okay, how do we do this rather than like okay, what are you doing wrong? Well, some of the shows I go back to the the, the horse in the bar. You know, the problem was the alcoholism. Mm -hmm. He went at it. Um, a lot of these shows, he's fixing the human problem, and then the bar is like gravy. So to me, you know, um, I guess we'll, we won't, we'll talk about renovations later, but, uh, you know, the, to me, the renovations were paled in comparison to getting them together. And I think, uh, you know, a lot, of, I, I think it's getting their m minds in the right place, and it's also removing the bad apples, as was Always. the case with Nikki. Always. You got to, you know, and again, Marissa, you've heard me say this before. Because, you know, with other projects, we've had other people that we've had to take out. And I've said to you guys, I'm not saying this to say I told you so. And I'm not just trying to come off as a know-it-all. I'm, I'm showing you guys how much stronger you can be when you make the unpopular decision to get rid of somebody that is destructive. And I, and I always want you guys to see just how far that destructive behavior can go and how great you can be when you remove that. Um, it also probably set a great example to everyone else. I think so. I mean, you know, there, there's three types that you always mention. Part of the solution, uh, part of the landscape, part of the problem. Right. And, uh, it, you know, you always say the par part of the landscape, they'll sw swing either way. Either but way. I think, it, you know, it's in these types of situations, you know, the part of the solution people can look at and say, you know, why am I, you know, busting my ass to do this when, you know what, here's someone who's stealing or whatever they're doing, right. smoking on the job, drinking on the job, and you know what? Why do I care? Yeah, why try? I know. That's what happens. So you even lose the greatness. And the people on the Who are the Landscape, because they're just landscape, they, they'll go with the problem. Yeah. And that's why it's very um, debilitating. And I know the lady felt bad. She didn't want to get rid of it. And the girl, Nikki, I mean, we saw a few seconds of her footage. She looked like she was nice. But, I, you know, who knows? I mean, it just might be like, what? Everyone's taking. What? Everyone's drinking. Um, it was just great when InBev came in. And he just called him out, and he's like, you know what? And then you knew we were on you, so you went from a F to a B. Which I appre I appreciated, um, you know, when they when they're honest about that fact, you know, uh, honest about the uh, fourth wall, so to speak, of of the show coming in. I love that. You know, I love that. You know, there's too much, too many production companies run away from that. Like, no, we all know cameras are there. Come on, like, let's, you know, I I love that that he he called them out and um, very revealing. We get rid of her, and now we make a statement to everyone else. Um, and on we go to, to the stress test, and we see the other bartenders just, you know. What, what did you think of the sticker method? Loved it. <laughs> I loved it. You know, it's, hum it's really humiliating. They're all covered in stickers, but. It, it's, it's, you know, as we talked about last episode, I think Dorinda mentioned it. It's a fun way to also get um, the people there involved. Yeah. So even if, even if they're not getting their drinks, at least they can have a fun time looking at how terrible things are you going. know what we always say comedy must rule and one of the things that you know we'll do is i know in maria's office not so much, we don't have to here because we are better than maria's office and <clears throat> how we operate but one of the things i always say marissa this is good for you to hear so you can convey it to the people but when people make mistakes i think it's better to you know obviously tell them what the mistake is but you can use humor 
heckle him a little bit, have some fun with it. it becomes a running joke in the office. Um, as long as it doesn't go to the place of abuse, it's a fun, healthy way to remind people that, you know, you did make the mistake. And I always say to people, okay, so would you rather us be laughing or would you rather us fire you or scream at you or do something like that? It's better to... Yeah. To go that way because, you know, you, you, just what you're saying, Phil, it's a little bit lighter, but you're still getting the message across. And, uh, you know, so speak, so uh, in the kitchen, I love, you know, uh, it was interesting to finally see John, pseudo executive chef John, behind the grill. And uh, Tiffany's just walking by, <sighs> handing out the stickers oh to him. Oh, my God. Yeah, I think he ultimately ended up with more than Q. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but at least we didn't we didn't get upset. He said we, we kept our cool. <laughs> but you know he just he, he just really showed his shortcomings yeah, i mean it, yeah. q is i really love, love q. Hey, q i need all day what do we got for all q day q was un q was on point you could see his enthusiasm when the place got right he was a team player you just love a guy like q yeah love him he was awesome um and poor <laughs> poor russell he had the joke with the with the girl of uh you know hey do, do you even have enough stickers for me uh, i might not I she uh, you know I don't know I get frustrated so easy I remember just to get my bartending job my my boss at the time laughed at me she's like you did what you enrolled in bartending school I'm like uh, yeah so I've studied I mean but how do you just not go into anything you know and and I, it it just frustrates me when people just fall back on oh but I'm really funny yeah. oh but the regulars love me uh, or I'm pretty so um, this was. The best thing that ever happened to her because now she, if, if if what we saw was accurate, she has a pliable trade now. Yeah, and I think so. I think I think uh, you know, um, there's a, there's another network I'm involved with called Black Hollywood Live, and and we had um, a model come in who's starting his own clothing brand. So they, for the interview, they played a fun game of going down celebrities' clothing lines right. to see if he can match them, and he did every single one. Wow. And he's like, guys, this is my bi this is my life. This I is love no it. joke to me. That's great. Why do you think I would get in a business without knowing that business? And did you answer because everyone else generally does? Because ninety nine percent of the world does, and that's I was why not, I was not part of the interview. And that's why we have a, them. That's why we have a one percent and a ninety nine percent. So, but that's amazing. You know, I'd love and, to meet them. And so, uh, and, and so, you know, it just goes with kind of that mentality of like, oh, well, I'm just a bartender, you know, and. You know, just even when the recon happened, the fact that they gave him old fashioned of like, oh, shoot, I forgot the bitters. Eh, maybe they won't notice. Yeah, they won't notice. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, you know, okay, make the mistake, but at least go up to them and say, hey, you know what? I made the drink wrong. Let me, yeah, I'll take it away. It's on us. Here's know. a new one. I mean, you know, that that's hospitality. You know, you're, you're apt to make a mistake, but do something about TV -wise, it. TV-wise, I'm grateful they didn't. <laughs> But, uh, Can we talk renovations or no? Yeah, let's let's go into renovations. So, um, at first, as okay, like, hey, basic renovation. You know, the the top of the bar looked a little different, but if you looked at the before and after, it was it didn't look like huge changes like we've seen in the other bars. But again, the bigger changes were what they did leading up to it, which was you know the partnership. However, I love the name. The name is amazing. The comeback. amazing genius name. I love the 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 sign. I thought it could be a little bigger on the door, but then I take that back because when they showed us the 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 roadside sign, which is huge in yellow and green, I'm I'm great with it. Um, I thought it looked fantastic. Once again, the uniforms great, interior decor great, and if we're stuck with the smoking, uh. I, the, they put in that system and then you know leave it to Bar Rescue to really explain the science of the system. Yeah, the low, the low pressure mm -hmm. and the high pressure for the uh, so the high pressure is over in the non-smoking section, low pressure is in the smoking section. Never that two shall meet. So pretty cool. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. and um, you know, talking about his arrangement with the two of the partners, saying, "Hey, let's sell some of the stuff you donated. Let's sell it." I, I, you know, too bad he couldn't just get his money. You know, she couldn't pay him out for his thirty grand. Uh, but here's what I see is the accounting and whatnot. And you know what? A guy like that that's kind of an old timer that's just willing to sit at the bar, who better to watch all your, quote, as we say in the business, silent partners than him? Yeah. Because that's the worst thing in this business is the thievery. So that's another great job for him. 
So yeah. accounting and just watch watch all the people and let her work the room because you know when she did she was great. Yeah, absolutely. and we didn't talk about that and that we should have said in the stress test how she 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 really stepped up finally. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you know ultimately her biggest problem is uh, you know she wanted John's help obviously, but she, she's got to learn to accept help from other people, but the right people and in the right way. I think she got caught in the weeds, Phil. Yeah, you you get you go in quicksand. You just keep going deeper and deeper. It's funny. There's a, so I always go to movies, but the movie The Replacements, the football movie, Keanu Reeves, is, he's talking about being a quarterback. And when you get in quicksand and, you know, and basically you just start falling behind in the game and you start making mistakes and just it's just worse and worse and worse and worse. And, and they feel her divorce and then she gets to the bar and there's, okay, so what do you do? So, oh God, so I'm so depressed. I'll have a shot. Okay, so I have, I don't have a social life now because I have this bar. Okay, so I'll become, I'll make these people my friends. And, to, and all these things you're doing, you're just going deeper and deeper in the quicksand. And then this regular comes in and he's like, hey, you know what? I got all this equipment in the back. You know, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you the equipment and I'll go work the thing and we'll make tons of money and just deeper and deeper in the quicksand. But, you know, with John, pulling her out, brushing her off, and letting her actually, you know, use her personality and her work ethic, which she, she I mean, we've seen the people try to fake it. Yeah. You can't fake it. For, you can fake it for an hour or two, but in the long run, we've seen tr people fake it, and I always say their knees buckle. And, and in the stress test and in the renovation, you could see she put the hours in, and she was effective. She was. Um, you know, my, my thing when things are going wrong is, is to go back to the basics. So if it's sports, you know, okay, just make, make the right passes, shoot That's a basket it. if this is basketball, whatever it may be, and, and start with the basics. So I guess perhaps in the bar business, uh, zero bar experience, seven years of drinking experience. Yeah. No. Um, but, so, you know, but start the with the basics. Thing. Identify, okay, what's going wrong, and just start trying to not, you know, uh, hitting singles and just being like, okay, tonight we're going to, uh, we're not going to spill any drinks, whatever it may be. Tonight we're going to do Absolutely. this. We're going to learn this and, and slowly build that confidence until, you know. Yeah, my thing is always foundation and, you know, cleaning, organizing the foundation. So I, I walk into a bar and I'm, or any business, first thing I'm doing is getting the place clean and I'm getting it organized. The next thing I'm doing is assessing whose strengths and weaknesses he did. And then it's uh, even simplifying things, which he always does when he knows he doesn't have the players. Oh, that, that was uh, Russell's biggest thing. He's like, he looked at the uh, drink menu. He's like, okay, you guys are serving basically uh, whatever it was, 30 drinks. Okay, let's start with, do you guys even know any of these? Right. They didn't. Well, you know what? Again, same in After Buzz. I, I'm always saying what? Cookie cutter, Phil. Yeah. Got to make it so it's really easy for you and Marissa to manage this place. So whether it's, you know, Locking down the cameras in one way, so it's it's all um, IP. I hate that. I hate saying what IP means because I don't want to be abusive. Yeah, you, you guys can figure that but, out. Um, well, I should say it's idiot proof, but it's it, I don't mean that. It's just we used to say it in the carny business. But if you keep everything so it's just simple uh, and easy for and and uniformed and easy for everyone to operate, it you know generally. You yeah, know, just, just like well. you know, going back to last episode, the fact that they didn't use um, o uh, oil to make the fries, right? Was, was, so smart, right? You know, because it's just they just couldn't handle that, right? And so you know, keeping it simple for those guys, and uh, you know, and you kind of identify like Q, they they gave him a lot of responsibility. Why? Because he was excited. He was excited, right? Handle it, and they empowered him, and he got like that's only going to work harder. He's yeah. only going to be, and he they gave him the shirt. Yeah, he was. He was so emotional. I was emotional because you know what the. <laughs> You know what I kept thinking of film is people who are in uh, the we have some friends from back in Boston who fashion themselves actors yet they've never gone to an audition an it's audition they've never auditioned they've never studied acting class theater nothing and they they demand of me based on our past relationships to have lines in my current films with Christopher Lloyd and Actor, Lang. Yeah, actors of that nature. Well, I'll just say Christopher Lloyd, because to me, that's he was the oldest guy we had and such a true thespian. And demanding that they should have lines with him. And I, I, I'm offended. But how would a Christopher Lloyd, you know, and those people feel with all the hours they put in training. So even that title of chef, it's just how dare you? Because... It's not. It's it's cruel. All the the few chefs I know, you know how many hours of training 
it, in schools and student loans that they have to pay back. And then on top of that, how many hours in the kitchen as assistants, as dishwashers, as, you know, getting just screamed at and crapped on. And, you know, just to get that title of chef. You know, we had someone from Maria's party. This uh, We had a party back in Connecticut this weekend. And I was I wouldn't call the guy by his first name. He said, oh, you can call me Tom. I go, no, you, you know, chef. And every time I saw him, I said, you know, hey, chef. That's what the guy was. He was the chef of a major, major, you know, national food line. And, um, yeah, it's an insult when someone comes and says, oh, I'm chef. So, and, and the reverse is true that, you know, for Q, that's amazing. That's, that's, he got a great crash course from an expert and... This is something he'll be able to carry with him the rest of his career, and he sh he's excited about it, and he should be excited about it. Yeah. But they're, they're, it's blessed always to have someone who gets it like he did, so it was it just was nice to see. It was. Yeah. Um, you want to check in on the bar? You oh. want to do our test? Yeah, we were going to call the bar to see if, what they had for an answering machine. Mr., um, you want to call them? Uh, so to, gi uh, to give you the full backstory, story, uh, just to refresh everyone's mind, um, you know, so John calls the bar... And uh, there's no answer. The voicemail box is full and hangs up on John. Is it dialing, Marissa? And they hung up, I believe. They hung up. Let's try again. You know where they're probably getting Slammed killed. Slammed with, with calls, Usually yeah. the first two days after airing, these places all get buried with calls. Let me try again. Right. Um, I will say, you know, I've read some Yelp reviews, and one of the people commented saying, hey, you know what, I gave this a bad review um, in the past, but... Uh, management contacted me and said, hey, can you give us another shot based on the bar rescue uh, remodel? And so the guy did, and, and uh, he said it was okay. And then, you know, um, some pretty good ones. I like that. You know, I, I, and again, that shows an owner who cares to go on to Yelp, find this guy. And, you know, I give credit to the guy for giving the second chance because we know from experience being in the online business that just uh, it's it just so much nastiness and negativity is able to spew online as so many angry, angry, bitter, miserable cowards are able to spew their hatred. So it's nice when, you know, somebody made a legitimate complaint and then gave them a second shot and then um, and made amends. Yeah. yeah, and, and yeah, I love that. So so they are actually answering. Okay. Do they have them on the line? Yeah, uh, no, they uh, hung up. Okay. They hung up. But um, they still answered the comeback, so right. they are still there working. And wait, wait, so they answered the comeback, and Marissa, did you just freeze, or did you just say hello? Uh, yeah, I hung up. Oh, my God, <laughs> hilarious, Marissa. Okay. I could call them again. No, 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 no. no don't, bo don't bother them. Yeah, don't bother them. That's just annoying for well, them. We'll check them out on Facebook. But, but but I did see, yeah, a lot of the reviews were positive. People were enjoying the barbecue, the, the menu and the food. Um, yeah, it seemed great. They have, you know, sliders, burgers, all that fun stuff. Yeah, so. no, and again, you know, waffle uh, waffle sliders were del delicious. To yeah, I, it's like I, I love it. I love the experts they bring in, and I just love, I love how they're not cookie cutter, yeah. that each bar, they just find a way to make it work, make sports work, make southern work. You know? Big big, uh, big step up, remember? So during the recon, hey, do you guys have, we got barbecue sauce. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, on your website, it says you have barbecue. Yeah, that hasn't been updated. Yeah, in a while. <laughs> um, so, but why would you Why would you even think that was a smart idea to offer? But who wants bar barbecue sauce on what? I don't know. Phil, come on. They didn't even, <laughs> let, you know, it was just. On what? No, it was. Uh, what am I going to dip? Some chicken? Like, no. you got nothing. It was just a social center, and now it's. it seems like it's a bar. And uh, and I, I like the, I, lo I, I love her. I think she's great. And I love the idea that, you know, he is there. And I would. I'd have him watching the bar. Yeah. I'd have him watching all my thieves. You know, he'd be great. I mean, think of the fact that they pocketed six or seven hundred dollars in one night. Now multiply that times seven, okay? It's almost five thousand dollars a week times four, right? It's twenty yeah. grand a month. Granted, you know, that might be maybe that was a super busy night, but who knows? But still, that's crazy. Think of the amount of theft. Yeah, that was taking place. And uh, you know, it's also worth noting that the uh, the accounting that she did have basically told her nothing. It was just a piece of paper with a bunch of numbers, and yeah, you know, okay, maybe an expense for her. this, this, but okay, what, what do you decipher from that? Yeah, I think it'd be. I think it's great to have an old timer come in and just just you know keep on those a books. Bean counters. I love it. You know, I love it. Seriously, you know, like those guys are great. 
I've so many, even the construction business, you know, I had so many guys like that that were like 65 and 70 but couldn't, you know, be out in the field, do the heavy work, but were fantastic at that, taking everyone's hours down, you know, doing the books, uh, making sure nothing got stolen. Yeah. It's just great. It's all, I, again, I'm, I knew John, John would figure it out, but it's usually hard, like I said, to get two people on the same page. And I feel, I feel like he did it, and I f hopefully they'll keep going in that direction. Um, and yeah, it's always for me. It's always longevity. I, I would love to see these places, um, you know, year, two years down the line. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe when eventually by season twenty, when Bar Rescue is over, <laughs> we'll do a uh, we'll do our kind of thing and just revisit I'm all the bars. Sure, I'm sure they'll do what Ramsey did. They always revisit. They'll do sp some special where they revisit. That's pretty easy to do. Yeah. Um, the only and it's funny when you say hundred, oh, however many episodes. It's as I was watching this tonight, and it's probably something I should say at the finale, but I'll say the season finale. But I, I just, uh, I'm good with the series. Keep going. Like I hope they don't get greedy and go. Oh, we banked X amount of episodes. We can just repeat the hell out of them because, for me, it's still gonna be. I mean, I look at Kitchen. Uh, Nightmare still still's going. He's still making new episodes, as far as I'm, uh, as far as I know. Yeah. And I, I'm, I mean, Phil, am I wrong? I mean, wouldn't you? Aren't you? I, I aren't you I, all in? I am all in. I absolutely want this show. You know, because there, there's always a, a new lesson, and I'm always surprised to see what those lessons are. You know, and so it just it just continues. And uh, even you know, from from talking to the experts that we've had on our show, the, you know, they're amazed by the lessons that they still continue to learn from John. And so, you know, John John has a lot to teach. Yeah, he's amazing. He's yeah, so he's amazing. And, and we also have to hope for him. You know, he's so successful and he's so busy in his own business. Um, you know, we have to hope that he wants to do this because, yeah, as a, <laughs> I don't know what made me think of it this week, maybe because I'm shooting something now myself. And I think of he's there those four days. We know how intense he is. So this is a grueling and very tiring shoot for him, I'm sure. And imagine he's like like Maria, you know, my girlfriend. She has a full time job, and to shoot something on top of it, it's hard. And he's got a full time business. This uh, it it's hard on him, I'm sure. And so hopefully, he'll keep taking it for the team. I think uh, I think you know, unless I'm wrong, I think he realizes what what this really does, and and uh, you know, however long it goes, you know, he understands that he's committed to this and it's going to feel a lot of other stuff that he wants to you know it's just going to propel everything it will it will you know hopefully that you know he won't feel as though hey it did what it had to do for me and now i can step out i i'm one that i like to uh i i i i know adam Kroll says it all the time about tv never leave it to the judges you yeah. always have to knock it out of the park so any other tv projects you want to do or any, any other anything else you want to do you want to continue doing excellence week to week. So maybe if he feels like he can't deliver excellence, you step down. But at the same time, I feel on the entrepreneurial front, I'd love to see him just keep this going as a fan as long as possible. Yeah. But as an entrepreneur, I think it's smart to keep this going and then build off of this. I would be, if he did walk away, I'd, I'd be okay with him walking away when he said, you know what, that I've taught all I could teach. Yeah. Well, but no, I, I think, I think knowing the type of guy, he's, he's always learning new stuff. Uh -huh. He is, but but if it, my fear is that it's it's the toll. Yeah, it's if you just say even if it's twelve episodes filmed, that's fifty days a year. Yeah. Okay, and then and then now tack on at least two days of travel. Mm -hmm. So now you've got what another twenty four now seventy five days a year. So you're talking about really, it's substantial. Well, well, and it's well, grueling too. It's not just okay. I'm gonna, you know, I'm shooting from like the other reality stars are shooting, you know, eight nine hour days for crew. He has to work. I mean, they shoot what they shoot, but he's got four days to turn the bar around. All right. What are, what are your thoughts on this? Since since we've gone off sort of ta off tangent, but uh, you know, m might be fun anyway in terms of discussion. What do, what do you think of like event planning? Like he does kind of a, not just bar rescue, but maybe oh. maybe it's like a special of, okay, you know, how to plan a wedding, how to plan like, you know, like with Maria's party. I mean, I, like, like listen, that no, I think if you take a next step away, like Tabitha takes over, she, they, she started in salons, but then they have her breaking out. Like I saw her doing dog grooming. I saw her do her bed and breakfast. Um, and I think she's got a lot of great principles. She's very entertaining. She's very colorful. I think John is is um, 
a lot deeper and more insightful and, and on, on such a grander level. And what I would love to see, I just think we could see John do generic fixing. So where we have the, the rescue um, format, I think it could be applied to just with him anything. Yeah. I'd love to see him fix, uh, you know, do event planning, but, I'll, but I'd love to see him, I don't know, go into an, uh, a regular company. I'd love to see him in a, in a, in a barber shop. I'd love to see him. But even, even with uh, the bar business, you know, like in terms of, okay, how to market your, uh, your alcohol, you know, properly from the bottle to the to how it tastes, you know, the, whatever it may be to the, to the mar uh, ads that go out, you know, I'm, that's, he knows all of that stuff. But I, but I would love to see him in another. I would think it would be fun to see him because if I'm telling you I can walk into a bar and give you those basic principles, that's that's me. Just imagine what John would do in another business. Yeah. Because I think he he just knows people and he has all these exercises and t techniques to reach people. Um, and I think, you know, they said this about Reagan. They said it about John F. Kennedy. That uh, they said it about Clinton. That these guys were great at getting great people around them. So John would come in and, you know, I, I look at Larry Bird when he coached uh, the Pacers. He went to the finals. And he had uh, Dick Harder, who was great uh, with, with defense and the X's and O's in the playbooks. And he had Rick Carlisle, who could do uh, draw plays and things like that. And Larry, you know, knew when to make those hard decisions. But for the most part, you know, he knew to bring in those guys. And, of course, Rick Carlisle is one of the best coaches in the NBA. He won a title after Larry. Um, but I feel like John would do that. He would be like, okay, I'm going to get this expert, this expert, this expert, Yeah. manage them and whatever. So I, it would be fun to see him in that format. I mean, but I don't know. I just want this show to keep going. I'm not well, asking for much. That, let's get into predictions for next week. Uh, you know, sometimes we don't always get a teaser, but we did this time. Yeah, right? we did. I'm excited. Uh, what are you looking forward about next week? Oh, episode? Ev everything. <laughs> first of all, John in Vegas, awesome. Yes. John doing Vegas's first gay bar, double awesome. Third, I can tell the guy running it. Is, we just have another clown on our hands. He's got to be a Pesci impersonator. Mm -hmm. A Joe. Pe I mean, I only saw him briefly, but I wonder if he's a Joe Pesci impersonator because he looks just like him. That's, that could be possible. like so much like him. Yeah. That yeah. I thought, yeah. okay, it might be a. So, no, I am just... All in. I am all in next week. And, and again, congratulations to John and, you know, the producers, because I just love putting him in different worlds. Yeah. You know, I love him in a karaoke bar. I love him in a country bar. I love him in a sports bar. Now, gay bar, and not only gay bar, gay bar Vegas. Love it. It definitely promised to love be it. a good one. Uh, we'll certainly be watching us uh, as hosts and AfterBuzz staff members. Um, in the meantime, you guys can follow us here at AfterBuzz TV on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Rate and comment. And uh, you might be wondering what the title of that movie that Kevin was talking about earlier. It's called Adventures of Serial Buddies, of course. Oh, yes, Adventures of Serial Buddies. Please download it on iTunes to keep AfterBuzz going. <laughs> I feel like I feel like the uh, medium age of a bar rescue listener um, or viewer is a, is a little bit older, so you guys respect the craft. So, you know what? Unlike the young younger people that have stolen Adventure Serial Buddies, yeah. thousands of times over, just buy it. Yeah, it's, buy it's, it. It's pretty cheap. It so helped us a lot. And just consider it a mercy download. There you go. How about that? <laughs> uh, Adventure Serial Buddies on iTunes and SerialBuddies.com. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.